Shalom. Today we're going to talk a little bit about chanting the Via Hafta. I've been at a few meetings lately where after the Shema, some other Jewish people and I, people who had been raised in the synagogue, began chanting the Via Hafta. It's a natural follow for us. And several people at the meeting expressed surprise they didn't know that such a thing existed. When I was growing up in synagogue, we always chanted it, and it was a very good introduction to the cantillation, to the trope that was practiced in our synagogue. So we began to learn that trope by chanting this every week. When I was bat mitzvah, uh, back around when the dinosaurs were around, it was the first year, my year was the first year that girls in our synagogue were allowed to be bat mitzvah. And we had a service on Friday night, and we didn't lead any prayers or chant from Torah. We just made a speech. Nevertheless, I was familiar with the cantillation as a result of having sung the Via Hafta. Cantillation is not uniform across different traditions. It varies some. I grew up in a conservative synagogue on Long Island. All the other people that I know who grew up in similar traditions have very similar cantillations, but they're not exactly the same. The cantillation marks show the accent for each word and also the phrasing, like the commas and the periods and so on. So in this lesson, we're just going to go through and note the different marks that there are. And in the next lesson, I'll actually sing the cantillation for you. So this is the first line. And we can see it's a bit unusual, but it does occur that the first word has two cantillation marks on it. Usually there's just one per word, but this one has two. So underneath the aleph, you see the little elbow there. And above the tav, you see the colon-like mark. Under the tav of et, you see the comma. Again, under the two yuds, which is a substitute for Adonai, here's the elbow. And then under the he in Elohecha, you see the little wishbone. And the wishbone marks the middle of the thought of the sentence. In this particular document that I copied, the people have marked the kamatz, which is unaccented, with red so that you know per to pronounce it O instead of A. Ah. So if you've been doing any Hebrew for any amount of time, you know that the word all is chol. It's variously spelt with this kamatz, or it can be spelt with the cholem chaser, but it's always pronounced O, chol. The hyphen is because there's only one cantillation mark for both words put together, and that's when the hyphens are used. So under the last cha, we see the other side of the comma. Again, nafshecha, there's the comma. And under the meodecha, the dalid, there's one small vertical line which indicates the end of the phrase, and then the colon indicates the end of the sentence. The nice thing about the via hafta is that it covers about half of the cantillation marks which are used in Torah. Some of them are used very, very rarely. There's maybe about 26 or 28 in all. We're going to cover 13 of them in this lesson. In this verse over the Shuruk, we have these two parallel backwards apostrophes. Again, under the resh, you have the elbow. And above the aleph and ele, there's a diamond shape. Now, some of these signs are always pronounced the same way, like the first one, the, the double backwards apostrophe, is always has the same sound. But the elbow will depend on what follows it, so we might be able to hear that. Here we have one apostrophe over the shin, this little z under the kaf in anuchi. Finally, we have a comma with a dot in it, again under the yud, the backwards comma. And here we are at the end of the verse. You see the little vertical line and the period. These two marks imitate the first two that we saw in the first word, via hafta. We have the same marks. They're separated in two different words. Here's the backwards comma and the wishbone. That's that halfway mark. 
The wishbone, when it appears under one syllable, will not have any movement. It will just be the one note. Here, under the cuffs of feet, we have a less than sign, and then the apostrophe above the line. Here again, here's your elbow with your colon above, and here we come again to the end of the verse. By now you have seen these two, comma, the opposite comma, the wishbone, and here we come to the end of the verse. When the Parsha is read in synagogue, it is read in pieces. Usually the whole Parsha is divided up into eight pieces, first, second, third, through seventh, and then the last one is called Maftir. It's the extra one, the separated one. So each verse always sounds the same at the ending, as you will hear when we sing it. But at the end of the Aliyah, at the end of the section, there is a different ending, even though the markings are the same. Okay, we're going to run through it again, and I will sing it slowly so you can hear the different tones. Adonai Elohecha Bechol Levacha Ubechol Nafshecha Ubechol Miyodecha Vehayu Adivarim Haele Asher Anochi Mitzavcha Ayom alevavecha, v'shinantam levanecha, v'dibarta bam, v'shiftecha b'veitecha, v'velechtecha b'aderech, v'shachbecha ukumecha. Ukshartam liot al yadecha, vehayu le totafot benenecha, uchtavtam al mezuzot betecha, uvisharecha.